Welcome back to my channel. My name's Erica. Today we're going to be doing a quilt trunk show. So I've made a lot of quilts over the years and I'm not going to be able to show them all to you because A, there's just way too many and you'd be here for days. Also, I've gifted a lot of them, but I thought it would still be fun to do a quilt trunk show of some of my favorite quilts. I'll be sharing information on each one on here, um, but if I can't remember them on video, just check the description box below this video. I will link every single quilt that I've made and the fabric I used for it down there. So what better place to start than at the very beginning? So... <laughs> I decided to tackle applique just right off the bat because why not and you know honestly I think it was probably good because if I started with kind of one of the harder things then I wouldn't be afraid to do it later on down the road so I went to my local quilting shop I grabbed a bunch of fun fabrics that I thought kind of went together and were just nice and colorful and I made this playful petals quilt by Cori Yoder she actually has a book called playful petals so that might not be the exact name of this quilt um, I also put flannel on the back side so this is just a white flannel because I didn't know what to do for the back and then I did a really cute navy blue polka dot binding on it oh look I even remembered to put a little tag on there Erica Arndt 2015 now I did start quilting at the very end of 20 14, I think November. I also decided to do some hand quilting. So after I sewed all these rows together, I did some hand stitching in different colors down each row. So, I mean, I really just dove, <laughs> dove right in and tackled probably one of the harder things I could have done right off the bat. Um, but honestly, I still love this quilt. It's super fun and colorful and it's just one of my faves and every time I look at, at it, it brings back good memories. It's also so pretty. So I have this one folded up on a um, little bookshelf that is sitting behind my couch in our living room so this gets displayed there and you can kind of see it and every now and then I refold it so it shows different colors but this was my very first quilt guys applique hand stitching um, I think I also did no I did machine binding for this one I didn't try the hand binding until a little bit later um, but I would like to just point out I don't know if you can see it there but my binding stitches are pretty messy it's not perfect by any means. My hand stitching um, is messy, but I think if you just take a look at this quilt uh, from a distance, <laughs> you would be like, that's a really good quilt, Erica. Good job. And that's what's important, right? Done, I think, is better than perfect. That's always my motto. Okay, quilt number two. I thought, hey, I'm going to video this. <laughs> So here we go. You guys probably recognize this one. This is my rag quilt tutorial. This was literally the first one I ever filmed, first tutorial I ever filmed. It was on my grandma's sewing machine, which is the same age that I am, so it's old. I used, I pretty much broke all of the quilting rules with this quilt here. I used all kinds of different fabric. This is a flannel, this is a minky, this, these pigs, these adorable pigs are a quilting cotton. Um, there's flannel for the middle layer, or no, fleece for the middle layer, and then the backing is this really soft minky fabric. So I pretty much just picked out colors that I liked put them together and made a rag quilt. And honestly, I get so many questions on what can you use? What fabric did you use? And you know what? I think that the sky's the limit when you're quilting. Use whatever you want, use the fabric you like, make it fun. This quilt, as you can probably tell, is well loved. This lives on my daughter's bed. It's been there since I made it. It's been washed and dried and loved and slept with for like six years and it's still holding up. So this was the second quilt I ever made. I love it. And actually this is one of still, I think my top watched videos. Now I'm not sure if this is the next quilt I made or not because I have a pile over here and now I'm kind of a little hazy, but I do remember those first couple because you never forget your first. All right, so this next one I love. This fabric is called Boathouse. It was by Sweetwater and the pattern is called Puddle Jumpin' by Thimble Blossoms and each of the blocks are the same and then I just added these little, uh, what are these called, corner, start, corner posts um, for sashing in the middle. I used this lovely navy blue polka dot on the back, which I wasn't really thinking uh, um, about, but you can really see the quilting on here because I used white thread and I wasn't great at quilting at the time. This was my first, um, I guess, straight stitch quilting job. I normally kind of do like a free motion quilting just because it's faster, it's fun, I like it. Straight quilting to me is really boring, but I love the look of it when you're done. So. So another one I made kind of in the early days, and I think this is called Sweetie Pie or Sweet, I think it's called Sweetie Pie. 
something pie. Um, this one is a pattern by Lori Holt, and this is using a variety of Lori Holt fabrics as well, so I, I think there's a mix of all different lines on here. Um, and then this one is, of course, a Dresden, and I used just a really soft, I think it was just a white with light polka dot, light blue polka dots by Riley Blake for the background. I'm not even sure if you can see them on the camera because they're so light. So here's one full Dresden, and it was supposed to have different fruits in between um, all their blocks, but I honestly didn't feel like making all those. So my quilt has all cherries on it. Um, and this is probably one of my favorite quilts. I love Dresden plates. This was my first Dresden, but yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite quilts. I love the colors on it. It was a lot of fun. It did take a while to do all of that applique on the center blocks. Um, which I think is why I chose to do cherries because then I could just kind of make them all at once and I didn't have all of her specialty rulers and stuff like that. I don't always follow the pattern exactly, um, but I do love this quilt. It's definitely one of my faves. So here's a really fun one. I made this for my daughter. This is an Elizabeth Hartman pattern. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure it has something to do with sausage dogs or whatever they're called. Anyways, the one has glasses, which she wears glasses, so I just thought that was super cute. So I did them all like this and then I did the one with glasses and the fabric I used for this was a mix. These front fabrics are actually, I think this is Gooseberry by um, Lella Boutique is the front and then on the back I used a print by Bonnie and Camille and this was I think from their handmade collection, I can't remember and then I think the binding is also Bonnie and Camille, it's just this little green and white polka dot binding so super cute and she had this on her bed for quite a while. Okay, so let's go for another one that I did quite a while ago. This one is Tilda fabric, and I can't remember the exact line. Um, I know the back side is Apple Bloom, one of their prints from Apple Bloom. And this is actually my quilt pattern. This is called Garden Window, I think. Something like Garden Party. I think it's called Garden Party. And I wanted to do a different take on a log cabin block. So this is actually one solid block, and then you chop it up, add some sashing, and end up with this kind of cool design and I really love Tilda fabric. I'm a huge fan of theirs. I just love the vintage feel it has. And then this one on the back is called Apple Bloom. This was from a different line um, than this original one. I can't remember what the front line is called but it was Tilda. But Tilda is a long time fave. I don't always get to sew with it because it's kind of a specific vibe or feeling but I do have a little cubby over here that's 100% dedicated to my Tilda stash. So I like to challenge myself when quilting and just try different things and try new techniques and so this quilt was that for me and um, this is a hexagon quilt and I'll have to put the information below because I can't actually remember the um, name of the pattern. But I will say that this one was definitely more challenging. This fabric is by Amy Cinebaldi and I can't remember the fabric line. I'll try and find it and put it for you below. Some of you probably already know it. Um, but these are definitely a little bit more of a challenge to put together. They are cut on the bias. You kind of strip piece these and then cut them on the bias and then sew them together. So uh, you really need to use starch with this and be very precise with your seaming or things get really wonky. Um, and I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, so here's another one of my earlier quilts and I love this quilt so much. This cake block was actually from, I think the Fat Quarter Shops um, St. Jude's so long so I think you can get this pattern for free I think I'll link it below um, and then the fabric I used was a uh, Pam Kitty morning fabric and she just has such fun beautiful colors and the um, quilt that this came from actually had a bunch of different blocks but I really loved this cake quilt and so I ended up making a ton of different cakes. And then in the spirit of learning something new, I did decide to try a self binding technique on this quilt. And so I backed it with this really fun, fuzzy um, fabric. And you can tell this one's pretty well loved. This lives on my daughter's bed um, and she'd had it on there for a very long time. Um, but instead of doing a traditional binding, I did the self binding method and I think it turned out really good. This one's also super soft and just cozy and comfy and definitely one of my faves plus these fun colors are just so much fun. So let's move ahead a little bit. This one is one of my all time faves. I don't know what it is about a star quilt. It's just traditional and um, I just am a sucker for them. So I decided to do this one. This is the LaConnor Stars and I think it's by Jarrah Brandvig. I'll, double, I'll uh, double check that for you. The fabric is of course by Bonnie and Camille. I'm sure you guys can recognize it. I believe this is their vintage picnic line, but I think I mixed in, yes, I think I mixed in some. This is kind of more from my stash. Um, and then it has their signature um, scrumptious backing on it. 
And I think they redid this one in this navy for the good life. So, oh, maybe the front is the good life too. I don't know. I, t I have a lot of Bonnie and Kim meal in my stash. And so when I make quilts like this, I tend to just pull from that because they all go together really well. Um, but anyways, I just love these stars. I love that little secondary kind of pattern that comes out where they uh, come together. And this is one of my all-time faves. It was also super easy to put together. So if you're a new quilter, these blocks are really, really easy and they go really fast. And I think the pattern might even be free. Don't quote me on that, but I'll link it below. So here is another one of my faves. Since we're talking about star quilts, we might as well just keep on going. And I made this for Katie. She loves unicorns. And I found this fabric. Is it right side up? And then I also, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen it, but I also made her a little um, American Girl doll baby bassinet out of it. And it's just so cute. So her baby has a matching quilt um, to this one. And then she's also got the little carrier for her. So this is probably one of my faves. And I did have to go steal this out of her room because she still uses it. And this one is well loved. It's so soft. One of the things I love about quilts is the more you use them, the softer they get. So this is a more recent finish, and this is one that I did from my Sew Sampler boxes. This is their barn blocks. These were the um, the patterns that come in their Sew Sampler boxes, and this was from 20, I think this is their 2019 one. I actually bought their kit, so it just came with a variety of grays and blacks, and I really like this one. It's just really kind of farmhousey and traditional. I like the natural vibe. This fabric on the back is one of my favorite prints ever. This is from Ikea and I'm pretty sure you can't get anymore. It was like their numbers print um, and it's like, it was like a wide backing print. But Ikea does sell fabric for those of you who didn't know that and I've had this in my stash for a long time waiting for the perfect quilt and I think this was the one. And then I just used this really pretty um, black and white dot for the binding. So this quilt is also an oldie but a goodie. This is a penny pig block from Lori Holt and I'm using a variety of scraps of Lori Holt fabric as well. So I think the the flowers were from her Farm Girl Vintage and then I think you can get the penny pig block or you used, used to be able to get it individually off Fat Quarter Shop. It might be in her Farm Girl 2 book now. I'm not actually sure. Um, and so I just put this together for Olivia. She loves pigs. She's the one that has the other um, pig rag quilt that I just showed earlier. And this is just such a fun quilt. And then on the back, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure who this um, pig fabric is by because I bought it off Etsy and it has been years. So um, just search pig fabric on Etsy and, and hopefully something fun will come up. But the backing wasn't actually big enough or I didn't order enough by the time I was done. And so I just added this cute pink border around the edge just to make it kind of fit. And so, you know, you do what you have to do. <laughs> it worked out just fine. And I think it was the perfect backing for this adorable pig quilt. So here's another unusual one and I really wanted to make this just because it was so different. So I think this is a free pattern um, called Maker or Maker Valley or Maker, I don't know. Anyways, it's by Art Gallery Fabrics and that is what this fabric is called also. It's called Maker Fabric by Art Gallery Fabrics. And this one just has a really different um, kind of look to it so I wanted to make it this maker word is applique on there um, and they do the template has you shows you how to cut it out and all of that so it's a little bit tricky um, but like I said I do kind of like to challenge myself and try new things um, and then for the back I used one of my all-time favorite prints which is this print from them this is their maker print and it just is like a text ruler kind of print and I love it so much so this quilt um, hasn't got a lot of use but I'm really happy that I took the time to make it to try some new techniques there's some triangles on there half square triangles and <laughs> it's really hard to show this whole thing in the camera at once but I'll try and get a better shot for you but this one was really fun so a little while after making my first rag quilt I wanted to try a different one um, and I thought I love them because they're so soft and fluffy but I wanted to just try something a little bit different so I made this one out of Bonnie and Camille fabrics this one's actually a 10 inch layer cake that I used and I did a pinwheel rag quilt and these were from their marmalade line so you probably can't get this anymore if you do find it it's probably going to be outrageously priced because it's out of print um, but this was so much fun to put together it's all flannel fabric and so it's super soft now flannel is kind of stretchy and it does um, kind of warp a little bit while you're sewing so you just have to be a little bit careful with it i also for the backing decided to use different flannel patches as well so i cut a bunch of different squares of it and just kind of mix match them on the back side. So some have them, some don't. And I just think it makes it so cute. And I love this fabric. This is probably one of my favorite fabric lines from them. Um, and it was just so fun and colorful. So this alternates between being in the closet 
being on display in my living room and being on my daughter's bed. So here's another one of my all-time faves. This is some different blocks by the Vintage Farm Girl by Lori Holt. And it also is using a bunch of her different fabric. Oops, it's upside down. And I just did a bunch of different blocks with it. These are the 12 and a half inch blocks. And so I've got a little teapot, some cherries, the bowls. What else is on here? Uh, chicken, cans, the sheep. And then here is the bottom half. And then on the backing, this is one of my favorite prints ever. I think it was called Happiness or something like that. And I apologize, I don't even remember the um, vendor, but, um, or the manufacturer. But this was such a fun print and I just thought it went so well with the fun colors on the front. So this is really probably one of my more favorite quilts. And this one usually lives either on the couch, sometimes it's on my bed, sometimes I hang it on the wall behind me. Um, this one has been everywhere, all over the house. All right, I have also made all of the Vils by Thimble Blossom. So Somerville, Winterville, Springville, Fallville, Autumnville, I can't remember. I believe this one is the Somerville. It's got a giant star in the middle and then it's surrounded by houses with some stars on the outside. And it's possible that there was a different block on this outside and I put those on because sometimes, like I said, I do change up the quilts. And this one is super big, so it's gonna be really hard for me to hold up. And this was using a variety of Bonnie and Camille prints. This looks like vintage picnic to me. And then for the backing, I used a print from, I think this is their handmade line. And they're also really good size. I'm not exactly sure what this one is, but they're huge. So here's another one of the Vills. I think this is their Somerville. And this one is super fun. I love all the little houses and trees around it. And then I use this huge navy flap floral print for the backing and a really cute just navy um, dot print for the binding. And I believe this is their Smitten fabric line. Um, don't quote me on that because it's been a little bit since I've made this quilt. But I do know that I did not have enough of my backing. So again, I went ahead and just pieced together a center strip in there with the same fabric that I used for my binding so it kind of matches. And then voila, I have enough backing for my quilt. So sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And these ones are getting harder and harder to hold up because <laughs> they're so big. Where's my Winterville quilt? I think Winterville is upstairs in my Christmas stash. And I was thinking if you guys like this video, I will do a Christmas version because I have a ton of Christmas quilts and they just deserve a video all of their own. Leave me a comment below letting me know if you would like to see a Christmas version of my trunk show. So this one is a lot of fun and I used that same Ikea backing on it because I had some and it fit. And I get questions about this all the time. This used to be hanging on the back of my wall in a lot of my videos. So here it is. And this is just a variety of blocks, again, from the Farmhouse Vintage book. And so the little barns, I think, are in the book. And then you can buy these individual blocks on the inside. So I have a kitty block. I've got the pig block. And then I did the cow block and the sheep block. And then I just made up the sashing for it. So I just did an easy little nine patch sashing. And then these are one inch. Well, they're one and a half to start out with, but they finish at one inch. And then one and a half inch strips. And then I just made up my own binding for that. So I just thought it was super cute and it went really well. And then I just added a border to it. And then, like I said, I put that Ikea print on the backing. And so um, you can check on Fat Quarter Shop website to see if you can still get the individual little blocks for these. I think she put those patterns in her second book. So I don't know if you can buy them individually anymore like I did for this one. All right, we're getting down to the bottom of our stack, guys. This is called Flower Girl, the pattern, and it is by Thimble Blossoms, and this is a lot of fun. These Flower Girl blocks are ginormous. This is a lot of fun. Her Flower Girl pattern is really fun. The blocks are huge. They're relatively easy to put together. Um, and then I just added this border. And then on the backing, I did this giant fun floral print on the backing as well. And then I just did a little simple green binding. And this is a Bonnie and Camille binding print. All right, and then lastly here, I can't believe we made it through all these quilts on my table here. Um, this one is probably one of my more popular ones as well. And I get questions on it all the time. So this cherry block and the old glory block are both from the Lori Holt um, Farm Girl Vintage book. And so I just put those together with some sashing and I added a border around it. And so it's really pretty. I also used that happiness print on the back, but this is kind of the opposite of the other one. So it's blue and white instead. Of, it's So it's blue on white instead of white on blue. Um, and this one is of course kind of my patriotic quilt. So I really love this one, but I do get a ton of questions on it. And then the fabric for this one is Bonnie and Camille, and I want to say that it is their day sale line. Yeah, I'm positive it's their day sale line. Um, I probably threw in some other prints in there as well because I may or may not have had enough. 
Um, and then this blueprint is not from Bonnie Camille. This is just from my stash and it's just like a text print that I found, but they all went together nicely. All right, so I think that's all the quilts that I brought down to show you today. I know that was a lot, so thank you so much for sticking around with me all the way till the very end. If you like this type of video, leave a comment below letting me know if you'd like to see more trunk shows. I do have a whole stack of quilts that are my quilt patterns that I think would be fun to go through, and I have a whole stack of Christmas quilts that honestly, they just need their own video. So if you like this kind of trunk show video, make sure to thumbs up and let me know in the comments below, and then I will make another one for you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out and thanks so much for hanging out with me today hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time it was on my grandma's sewing machine which is the same age that I am so it's old it was born it was I'm not gonna tell you when it was bought what are we on like 2021 now long time Ugh, hot Woo. managing quilts is a lot of work I need to get a I need a partner in here and nobody cares All right, my stack is almost gonna be showing up in the camera. So here's kind of the top half of blocks. And then for the backing, this was one of my most favorite backings I've used. Okay, are you guys bored yet?